Now we are already moving towards the end of the video. Shall we debate the existence of God and some philosophical arguments? Only those who are ready follow me. Let's go. The mystery of being. Why is there something instead of nothing? To affirm that God is eternal is not to explain it. Even if we accept the theory of the eternity of being and that it would not be necessary to explain its beginning or origin, still this does not explain its reason for existing. The idea of infinity for man is a finite idea. The image of eternity finds limits in our perception of time, just as the idea of perfection is an imperfect notion. Why is there something instead of nothing? Or why are the laws of nature what they are? We don't know either. We will probably never know. But for André Comte Sponville, calling this Mr. God is a cheap solution. From another perspective, André Comte does not completely rule out the possibility of God's existence. Science is not able to deny the existence of God, or even to prove it. However, it is necessary to recognize that science has pushed back theological explanations about various phenomena. For example, nobody nowadays would explain tides or eclipses by divine will. However, the fact that the laws of physics explain a phenomenon, we cannot explain why such laws exist, which gives rise to the theory of divine creation. One of the theories that seeks to prove the existence of God is the physical teleological theory. This theory starts from the logic of intelligent design. He claims that the world is too complex and orderly to be the result of chance. They cite the example of the clock, with its gears making a parallel with the laws of nature, such as gravity. According to Sponville, this theory, although interesting, minimizes anomalies, diseases, and natural catastrophes. The author concludes by saying that the existence of God is thinkable, as much as his non-existence. André Comte claims that it would be simpler and more effective for God to decide to show up himself. Kant and other philosophers and theologians argued that, if God showed himself and was evident, morality would end and we would not have freedom, it would be a forced faith. For André Comte Sponville, the argument is very weak. There is less freedom in ignorance than in knowledge. In other words, it is not feasible to argue that it is better for people to remain ignorant on the grounds that this would bring freedom. It's an argument worthy of a tyrant leader of the 17th century or a lesson drawn from Machiavelli's lessons, I'd say. Believing in God, from a theoretical point of view, is always equivalent to wanting to explain something that we do not understand. The world, life, consciousness, through something else that we understand even less. God. How intellectually satisfied with this procedure. Comte Sponville argues that there will always be things unknown to science, and this is what makes scientific progress possible. On the contrary, religion has always tried to explain the unknown by the will of God, that is, explaining the unknown with something we know even less. Spinoza said that, the will of God is the asylum of ignorance. That is, people take refuge in it to explain what they don't know. Spinoza's God has no anthropomorphic traits, consciousness, will, commandments. Espinosa calls this energy conatus. As for God being a human projection, Montesquieu said, if triangles made a God, they would give him three sides. God is always conceived by analogy with what we are or know. You must have heard phrases like God is to nature, as the painter is to his work. God is for humanity, what the father is for his children, that he is for the church, as the groom is for the bride, etc., are all clear examples of anthropomorphism. All anthropomorphism referring to the absolute, the unknowable, is naive. Silence, in the face of the unspeakable, would be worth more, said the great philosopher Sponville. A detail about Sonville is that he says that in addition to not believing in God, negative atheism or something close to agnosticism, he also believes that God does not exist, positive atheism or stricto sensu atheism. Shall we add more wood to the fire? I recommend that, if you don't have a strong stomach, or if your faith is shaken, you can leave the video at this point, because you might be shaken. Warning given, for those who stayed, let's analyze the following logical proposition. Epicurus said, either God wants to eliminate evil and cannot, or he can and will not, or he cannot and does not want to, 
or he wants and can. If he wants and cannot, he is powerless, which does not correspond to God. If he can and doesn't want to, it's bad, which is strange to God's characteristics. If he cannot and does not want to, he is at the same time impotent and evil, therefore he is not God. If he can and wills, which belongs only to God, where does evil come from, or why does God not suppress it? The poet Lucretius, in his tragic poem, said, Life is too difficult, humanity is too weak, work is too strenuous, pleasures are too rare or vain, pain is too frequent or too atrocious, chance is too unfair or too blind to believe that such an imperfect world is of divine origin. Well, folks, this was all just a taste of the discussion contained in the book. As I said, it's a very interesting debate. I strongly recommend that you buy the book to delve deeper into the area. So let's repeat the phrase that I used as a basis for this theme of the existence of God. The mystery of being. Why is there something instead of nothing? To affirm that God is eternal is not to explain it. Even if we accept the theory of the eternity of being and that it would not be necessary to explain its beginning or origin, still this does not explain its reason for existing. Well, folks, this was all just a taste of the discussion contained in the book. As I said, it's a very interesting debate. I strongly recommend that you buy the book to delve deeper into the area. So let's repeat the phrase that I use as a basis for this theme of the existence of God. The mystery of being. Why is there something instead of nothing? To affirm that God is eternal is not to explain it. Even if we accept the theory of the eternity of being and that it would not be necessary to explain its beginning or origin, still this does not explain its reason for existing. The last topic of today's video will not be a sentence. Let's talk about a subtitle entitled The Joyful Despair. The author Andre Comte Sponville makes us reflect on the possible impacts of losing faith. According to him, for those who lose faith, there is no considerable change in the issue of natural knowledge, nor in relation to morality. Sponville states that scientific knowledge is based on historicity, and therefore there would be no harm done. As for morals, because they are rooted in society, even religious morals have become secular over the centuries. In this way, the main impact of losing faith would be the disappearance of hope. The German philosopher and sociologist Max Weber was the first to initiate analyzes and an accurate reading of the impacts of secularization and the loss of faith, that is, of rationality, for the behavior of modern man. The concept brought by Weber is called disenchantment of the world. Weber introduced the concept of the disenchantment of the world by arguing that the rise of science in modern society had led to the devaluation of traditional magical and religious beliefs. As rationality and logic became more prominent, many people lost faith in supernatural explanations for natural events. So going back to talking about the book, Sponville continues his argument in the sense of saying that the loss of faith would bring consequences related to hope, because those who believe in God hope that love will overcome hate, that justice will overcome injustice, and, ultimately, life will triumph over death. At this point lies the main persuasive weapon and the most important thing that religions have to offer in the subjective field of humanity, hope. Since those who believe in God are not concerned with what the eyes see, quoting the Bible, much less with philosophical reasoning, they simply believe and that is enough. In the field of subjectivity, in its interior, this is enough to generate comfort, protection, sense of direction, and satisfaction. Conversely, for those who do not believe in God, what is it permissible to expect? That's the question asked by Sponville, which, in my opinion, is the million-dollar question. He answers himself. Lack of faith in divine order does not prevent us from wishing that wars would cease, that hunger would end, and that would be more love in the world. However, our desire must be anchored in human action. It is not possible to count on any help from a miraculous divine action. For those who do not believe in God, nature is blind and treats the just and the unjust alike. Feelings of helplessness, tragedies, death, affect children or the elderly, fair and unfair, without there being a transcendental explanation for it. From this lack of meaning, 
which believers simply attribute to the will of God, or quote loose phrases like, there are things we will only understand when we die, we can conclude that every lucid atheist cannot escape despair, hence the subtitle of the book, The Joyful Despair. I know that it seems to us that the argument goes in the direction of demonstrating that hope is something good. However, it is not like that. Woody Allen, the celebrated writer, once said ironically, how happy I would be if I were happy. Faced with the materialistic society we live in, in which happiness is linked to the desire to possess, and desire is related to the hope of prospering, earning money, a better life, Andre Sponville teaches us about the paradox of hope. He wonders, what would happiness be? Would happiness be having what we want? But how, if the desire is the need? Then he makes an emblematic statement. If we only want what we don't have, we never have what we want. If you don't understand this statement, replay the video as many times as necessary, and watch again until it becomes clear to you. It's a simple statement, but so profound that some people will have a hard time understanding it at first. But do not worry. Understand that we only want what we don't have. We never have what we want. That is why we would be separated from happiness by the very hope that pursues it. Let's take advantage and make a parallel with Stoicism, which is a philosophy that has come back into fashion with great force lately. The sage is a man of action. While everyone is content to wait, the sage lives in the present. He just wants what he is. It is the spirit of Stoicism. As the wise man only desires what exists, what is, or what depends on him, why he would need to wait, or live on the basis of hope. On the contrary, the reckless man desires what it is not, what does not depend on him. So how could he be happy if he doesn't stop waiting? When you unlearn to wait, I will teach you to want, Seneca said. Because the beauty of the text and brilliance, I will quote an excerpt from the book without changing a single comma. I would not dare to paraphrase. It is not hope that makes people act. How many expect justice and do nothing for it? It is will. It's not hope that sets you free. It's the truth. It's not hope that makes you live. It's love. Sponville. Congrats on watching to the end. If you've made it this far, I'm sure you want to buy the book because the subject is fascinating. Read a book, but that doesn't stop you from watching the second video. You can even read the book and then come back here to watch this video again. Because here I bring my interpretation, right? My view on this work. Certainly, when you read, you will see other things and you will be able to compare with my interpretation. But if you really want to delve into the author's theory, it's essential and I really recommend that you buy the book so that you can calmly enjoy all the content. The link to buy the book is in the description. I will also leave other links to books and support materials to complement the studies. A big hug and see you in the next video here at the Knowledge Society.